I don't know what it is with me reviewing projectors so late in the game. Last week, I looked at a Hisense UST laser projector that's been discontinued. Today, we're testing an Epson projector that's launched almost two years ago. I know sometimes I like to come last, but not this way. Not this way. This coverage is sponsored by Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086 for the best prices and expert advice for TVs, AV and Hi-Fi. Hello everyone, Vincent Dio from HDTV Test here, and today we are reviewing the Epson TW9400, also known as the Epson 6050UB in the USA. It is a LAM-based projector which achieves 4K resolution using pixel shifting technology from its 1080p 3 LCD chips. The design is typical Epson, with rounded corners and a centrally mounted lens. Our Epson EH TW9400 review sample is finished in black, ideal for installation in a dedicated home theater room, but it's also available in white, model number EH TW9400W, for those of you intending to place it in your living room. The connections are found on the back of the machine, including two HDMI 2.0B inputs with HDCP 2.2 compliance. There are also network and serial ports, as well as a 12 volt trigger for system integration. Setup and installation was a breeze. We loved the motorized lens cover, as well as motorized lens focus, zoom and shift functionalities, allowing us to fit the projected image onto our screen without having to get up from our couch. There's even lens memory capability, which is rare at this price point. So if you're using a scope screen with constant image height setup, you can easily switch between 169 and 2.35 aspect ratios with one touch of the button on your remote control. With a measured light output close to 2000 lumens in high lamp mode, the Epson TW9400 or 6050UB drew one of the brightest pictures we have seen from a lamp based projector, which may be useful if you are looking to light up a very big screen, say 150 inches or larger, although of course you would have to put up with louder fan noise too. Black level wasn't as deep as the Sony's, let alone the JVC's, but it's noticeably better with punchier contrast than all DLP projectors including the BenQ's. There's dynamic iris on board, and you can manually clamp down the iris using the lens iris control to cut the light output and achieve deeper blacks. Otherwise, engaging auto iris didn't introduce as much pumping artifacts as what we saw on the Epson LS500 but didn't deepen the blacks in most scenes either, so we are probably tempted to leave it off. Color accuracy was good, but not as outstanding as the Sony's and JVC's after calibration. On this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, average data errors measured below 2, which is great, but there were a few colors, mainly with yellow base, that exceeded the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3. Nevertheless, most viewers probably wouldn't be able to spot these color inaccuracies in real-world content without comparing to a reference screen. We sincerely doubt many owners will be watching standard definition content on a projector, but upscaling quality was impressively good on the Epson TW9400, retrieving clean and sharp detail from this SMPT RP133 test card in 576i without any junk pixels and only minimal ringing and fizziness. With the interlacing set to film auto, the TW9400 correctly detected and processed 3 2 cadence in 480i and 1080i, but failed to do so for 2 2 cadence in 576i, so if you are based in PAL regions such as the UK and other European countries, always send a progressive video signal to the projector, which should be the case by default on most modern video sources these days. For 1080p sources, we found that disabling all sharpness and edge enhancement, turning off image preset mode, then engaging 4K enhancement to activate pixel shifting, produced the cleanest and smoothest results. Otherwise, the Epson TW9400 passed full chroma bandwidth from this 1080p test pattern on the Spears & Munsell HD benchmark disk. The TW9400 is equipped with motion compensated frame interpolation technology, but it cannot be deployed if 4K enhancement is engaged, so you'll need to disable pixel shifting first. On this horizontally scrolling test pattern, 
setting frame interpolation to low didn't increase motion resolution from the similar whole baseline of 300 lines. We had to go up to medium or high to double motion resolution to 600 lines. Even on the least aggressive low setting, Epson's frame interpolation was prone to introducing so opera effect or SOE, plus flickering and stuttering artifacts in 24 frames per second movies, as well as interpolation artifacts in 50Hz or 60Hz content, so we prefer to switch frame interpolation off, which thankfully still reproduced 24 frames per second films smoothly without telecinic judder. HDR is always challenging on projectors due to limited light output, but the Epson TW9400 did better than most due to its higher lumens output. The projector doesn't automatically switch between different picture presets separately for SDR and HDR content. One workaround is to use the save memory function where, with a few clicks on your remote control, you can summon the SDR settings when watching SDR content and the HDR settings when watching HDR material. There is no dynamic tone mapping on board for HDR10 content, although Epson does provide an HDR10 setting control under the dynamic range submenu, which lets you manually adjust the tone curve to either retain more specular highlight detail or preserve overall brightness. It's hard work though, because you would have to make manual adjustments for each title to achieve optimal results, so we recommend just getting a Panasonic 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player such as the UB9000, and use the HDR optimizer function which pre-tone maps the incoming video signal to the capabilities of the projector, thus retaining more specular highlights without sacrificing average picture level excessively, or without any manual intervention on your part. There's a color filter on the Epson TW9400 or 6050UB, which is only active in the cinema and digital cinema picture modes. Engaging these picture presets would move the color filter into the light path, increasing DCI-P3 color gamut coverage from 85% to almost 100% UV, but unfortunately this would also nearly half the light output, causing the picture to look darker. Even though there are no 3D glasses bundled with the Epson EH TW9400, the projector supports 3D playback and managed to resolve Full HD 3D resolution according to our own custom ordered test pattern. 24Hz 3D video signal was presented without telecinic jitter too, so slow panning shots in 3D Blu rays would still look smooth. For gaming, input lag measured 28 milliseconds regardless of whether image processing was set to fine or fast, as long as all image and motion enhancements were switched off. Let's sum up. With both Sony and JVC only releasing more expensive, native 4K projectors these days, Epson now has the sub £5,000 space all to itself, with the TW9400 being the cream of the crop. It delivers inkier blacks than similarly priced DLP projectors, punchy contrast, bright lumens output, native 24p playback, low input lag, motorized lens control and lens memory, all for a street price of around £2,500 at the time we filmed this video in August 2020. Its motion interpolation and dynamic iris aren't as refined as other manufacturers' implementations, and you do lose a lot of light if you choose to use the white color garment filter, but we genuinely think its overall picture quality can only be bested by a projector costing upwards of £5,000, and so, the Epson TW9400 receives our highly recommended award. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.